Hello all, I welcome you all to the ninth lecture in this uh, solid state electronic devices course. So in the previous lecture we discussed about uh, electronic drift, diffusion, interaction with electromagnetic uh, radiations, phonons and so forth. Right? So today we will talk about situations in which we have high fields, high field transport and impact ionization. What we are basically trying to do is to uh, understand the interaction of electrons and holes in a semiconductor under various instances. We are basically trying to independently uh, understand the interaction of electrons and holes in a semiconductor to various aspects such as phonons, uh, electromagnetic interaction. Uh, normal electric field, drift, diffusion and so forth and then put them all together into a device and then study its transport to understand the IV characteristics and so on, right. So as a part of that we will study what happens at high field transport. So before we begin we will just cover some very basic aspects. So let's say we have a semiconductor, we have electrons, right and then we apply an electric field and then we have the electrons response to the electric field. We previously saw that the electrons respond with a velocity in the direction of the electric field such that it is related to the uh, to the applied electric field in this fashion where mu was called as the electronic mobility right however this relationship is true only if this electric field is small and the velocity v is small enough such that this mu can be an independent uh, uh, constant irrespective of the applied electric independent constant if the, with respect to the uh, electric field that was supplied. So if we take a look at the electronic distribution in the semiconductor, we can understand that say this is the band structure and this is the conduction band, right? At thermal equilibrium at zero, let's say at zero Kelvin, we have the electrons filled up to a particular energy which we call as the Fermi level, right? All these states below this are filled and you can easily see that the electrons fill plus k directions and minus k directions at in equal proportions right so this means that electrons moving in the positive x axis is matched by equal number of electrons moving in the x in the negative x axis such that the net motion of electrons in any particular direction becomes zero and this is called as thermal equilibrium and the energy of the electron so te is called as the equilibrium thermal energy of the electron depending upon the velocity that it has right uh, one, one should one should be careful here that this is not the same as the energy of the lattice which will be much smaller right but then this is the electronic energy which depends upon the fermi dirac statistics which lets you uh, occupy energy levels which are much higher than the uh, the temperature energy right so this gives you some energy which is called as the equilibrium electronic thermal energy this is called the thermal energy sorry this is not the thermal energy this is the equilibrium electronic energy equilibrium electronic energy right if if, if, if an electric field is up, applied under this particular situation, you can see that electrons occupy energy levels at a higher energy in one direction with respect at the expense of uh, electrons in the other direction, right? So you will have a distribution which is skewed in the direction of the applied electric field. If I have an applied electric field in this direction, you can see that the distributions are getting skewed such that you have more number of electrons occupying in a particular direction in which the electrons are accelerated by the applied electric field and you have lesser number or you have suppressed number of electrons up, uh, going in the opposite direction right so this additional energy that is provided to the electron basically leads to the additional uh, the uh, velocity of the of the additional mean velocity of the electron right which is written as mu naught e root of t by t e right t is the equilibrium energy as we previously saw and this capital t is the actual energy upon the applied electric field e at equilibrium of course t is equal to t and then you get back the same relationship right 
However, as you increase the electric field, the velocity starts to increase. And if you reach a velocity which is close to the th velocity of the sound, so if Vd is approximately equal to the velocity of the sound, you have what is called as a deviation from this constant mobility model, right? And you have the velocity written as mu naught 1 minus 3 pi by 64 mu naught e by cs square into e. So you have this expression, right? which is replacing the actual mu that is the constant of uh, uh, velocity versus uh, electrical applied electric field relationship by this particular uh, value which you can see is dependent on the applied electric field and it is actually proportional to the actual velocity so this mu naught t is the actual velocity that we previously saw is proportional to the ratio of the actual velocity by the velocity of the sound right if this value is much smaller than the velocity of the sound, you can see that you get back to the original relationship and if this value gets higher and higher and you see that this uh, this component will start to dominate and the mobility value starts to decrease such that the velocity does not raise as much as it used to raise in the case where there is no saturation effect so it's, there is no effect of uh, a raise in the electronic temperature so the question comes what happens that causes the velocity to not to raise as much as it should right the main reason is the actual temperature of the electron right uh, t is now much larger than t this equilibrium uh, electronic temperature this leads to sharing of the potential energy with the phonons So this sharing of the potential energy with phonons lead to, uh, leads to the reduction in the actual velocity and you undergo what is called as velocity saturation which is written as root of 8 Ep by 3 pi m0 where m0 is the mass of the electron and Ep is the energy of the optical phonons. Remember, so we, we previously saw the dispersion phonon dispersion relationship right so you have the acoustic phonon dispersion branch and then you have the optical phonon dispersion branch the actual saturation velocity depends on the optical phonon dispersion branch and the velo and the and the mass of the electron right this is because the optical phonon branch has much higher energy so that it can take away a lot of energy a lot of kinetic energy from the electrons as well as the fact that it has such high energy even at low k vector values right we previously saw that if the electron has to lose energy and get scattered into a different place it should undergo both k prime is k plus q as well as e prime is e plus h cross q right so basically this particular relationship should hold for the electron to be scattered right and electron scattering is what causes the losing of energy in the uh, in the high field case or in any, in any of the cases right for any of the interaction it should have it should be scattered to a different electronic state so this particular relationship tells you that the saturation velocity depends upon the material parameter as well as the mass of the electron right so the mass of the electron tells you at how quickly it gets saturated as well as the uh, the phonon dispersion that you have right so at this point we will just stop and then take a look at uh, uh, experimental values of uh, saturation velocity in different semiconductors so here we have the uh, carrier drift velocity versus applied electric field for different semiconductors. So we have gallium arsenide here. We have germanium here and we have silicon here. You can see that the carrier drift velocity is much higher for gallium arsenide. That's because of the fact that V is equal to mu into E and mu is 1 by E and you know the effective mass in gallium arsenide is much smaller than in germanium and silicon and hence it has a velocity which is much higher saturation velocity which is much higher than silicon and germanium right and you can see that it also undergoes saturation 
at a much earlier velocity right germanium undergoes saturation here silicon undergoes saturation here and gallium arsenide undergoes saturation much earlier right that becomes that is because it undergoes velocity it reaches velocity much higher than either of these two semiconductors right and you can see that both germanium and uh, and silicon right they both uh, undergo uh, have a saturation velocity which is approximately similar right whereas the uh, the gallium arsenide has a very different characteristics it reaches saturation velocity and starts to have a reduction in the velocity after a particular applied electric field it has very interesting saturation behavior but then uh, in comparison to germanium and silicon which does not show any such behavior the reason behind gallium arsenide showing this reduction in the uh, drift velocity beyond a particular electric field is because it has what is called as a satellite conduction band so this is the direct band gap right so you have your electrons filled to a particular energy level and it has much it has a much sharper balance band whereas the satellite band has a much wider band such that this effective mass is long is larger than the effective mass of the direct band gap right that is that is given here so once you reach a particular electric field like like this as we have previously drawn the electrons start to fill or drip down to the satellite band where its mass is much higher than the original conduction band mass which gives you a lower uh, drift velocity at higher electric fields right so the electrons spill from here to a satellite band which has a higher mass and lower drift velocity this is the reason why gallium arsenide has a reduction in the uh, electric carrier drift velocity beyond a particular electric field right you can also see that it shows the uh, carrier drift velocity of both electrons and holes right? the dash line is that of a hole you can see that the hole has a smaller drift velocity for the same applied electric field you can draw a, you can see any line here right? the dash line has a smaller uh, drift velocity than the uh, the solid line solid line belonging to electrons that's because of the fact that the holes have a much higher effective mass right effective mass directly translates to the mobility and hence having a smaller velocity for the same applied electric field now with this discussion of uh, velocity saturation and electrons uh, carrying out at uh, or traveling at very high velocities we will discuss very briefly the concept of impact ionization so so what happens is if you have electrons which uh, which travel at velocities much higher than the uh, the thermal equilibrium velocity the kinetic energy that they have is half mv square right if this is greater than or equal to the band gap you can see that these electrons can actually excite uh, electrons from the valence band remember we are talking about electrons in the conduction band right and they have and basically you have a few more electrons in the valence band right so these electrons which are moving in the conduction band can travel at such high velocities that it will have energy to actually excite an electron from the valence band to the conduction band thereby recombining back right so this aspect or this process of an electron just by the sheer velocity that it can gain from the applied electric field can generate additional electron hole pairs in the semiconductor and this process is called as impact ionization and this is most often seen in channels which are very short why because if the channel is much longer then part of the energy of the electron which is being accelerated is lost to phonons right so if the electron travels at well if, if if the electron scattering length is scattering length with phonons right is much larger than the device length then you will have electrons which actually accelerate which, which will create additional electron hole pairs right? this is the process of impact ionization and you can see that the uh, the rate of 
career generation rate of additional career generation due to the uh, electron velocity is written as n the number of electrons which are being accelerated growing with the particular velocity v n right into alpha n alpha n is called as the ionization rate and this is what is being typically measured in semiconductors so we will see this is an experimentally measured ionization rate for uh, for different semiconductors like silicon silicon carbide and germanium right and you can see that this is plotted in the reverse of electric field applied so that these values are very high electric field and one on the far right as a small electric fields right for the same ionization rate let us take a line here right you can see that the elements or materials which are having smaller band gap has higher ionization rate when compared to silicon right silicon does not even start the silicon ionization rate starts here right at particular at this particular uh, let us say let us say this line about 10 power 3 right 10 power 3 silicon gets ionized at about uh, about 5 to 6 centimeter inwards whereas silicon carbide requires a much higher electric field thus elements which have much longer or much higher band gap has a smaller ionization rate when compared to uh, elements with much smaller band gap which is pretty natural right so basically all you are saying is the electron so let us say that if you have to excite an electron from the valence band to the conduction band you should give it that much energy higher the band gap the higher the kinetic energy that the element that the electron should achieve to actually cause this excitation from zero to high right so basically that's why certain elements with much higher band gap are much higher has much higher ionization energy this is also a reason why these elements have much higher dielectric breakdown but let us not go into there for now right we are just talking about ionization rate and it's we'll stop at saying that uh, materials with longer with with higher band gap has lower ionization rates right so we will stop the discussion here and the next time we will meet we will talk about uh, continuity equations and governing equations which determine uh, carrier transport in semiconductors okay thank you